Advanced Studio Classroom is on the air. Join us today as we discuss editing your DNA. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Advanced Studio Classroom. My name is Brandon, and today we begin our Newsworthy Clips article. And I have in the studio with me two wonderful panelists. Welcome, panelists. Hello, glad to be here. I'm Linda C. All right, and we also have Albert. Hi, everyone. It's good to be here. And today's topic, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're talking about editing people's DNA. That sounds kind of scary, but、uh, actually, we hope this will, you know, be used for good. We'll learn much more about that when we get into today's article. First of all, Linda, could you just read that title for today's article? It's a bit long.、Uh, what does it say? To prevent serious conditions, scientists should be able to edit people's DNA. Panel says. Okay, so we start off. They want to prevent serious conditions. That's supposed to be the purpose of this, and scientists should be able to edit people's DNA. That's according to a panel. What is a panel? I think most of you know. If you listen to、uh, this program, we talk about panelists. What is a panel, Albert? Well, a panel is a group of people that are an expert on a certain、uh, subject or field.、Mm-hmm, that's right, and so、uh, they also may. Release the information that they that they、uh, come up with. For example, here this panel is telling us, you know, what's going on with DNA editing. Right, and usually when I hear the panel, I think of、uh, a TV show, American Idol,、mm-hmm. where they have a panel of experts or judges that give feedback or critique. That's right,、yeah. and you two are experts here today, right? Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, well, we are talking about editing DNA. If you have your magazines. Please go ahead and open them up to page twenty, and we will have our first reading for today. Scientists should be allowed to alter a person's DNA in ways that will be passed on to future generations, but only to prevent serious and strongly heritable diseases. According to a new report from the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Medicine, however, tinkering with these genes in order to enhance or alter traits such as strength, intelligence, or beauty should remain off limits. The report authors concluded, changing the so-called germline, effectively editing humanity's future by altering genes in human reproductive cells. Is illegal in the United States. It has largely been considered ethically off limits as well, at least while bioethicists and scientists ponder the unforeseen effects and unexamined moral dilemmas of using new gene editing technologies. Okay, well, we are starting off with scientists, and of course, scientists here are doing research. And、uh, it says scientists should be allowed to alter a person's DNA. What does it mean to alter something, Linda? Change. All right, to change something. That's a a, a term we often see in,、um, I guess, the medical field or when we're talking about science. It sounds really surreal to me because I feel like the only thing that I ever alter are like my pants, you know, lengthwise. <laughs> and here we're doing DNA, which is like science fiction coming true. Yes, and we 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 are seeing that more and more often. Things that. You know, in the past, where science fiction are actually coming about today. So these scientists, they should be allowed to alter a person's DNA in ways that do what, Linda? Will be passed on to future generations. Okay, so we are talking about future generations, and so they want to go in and edit a person's DNA and fix something. And so a disease, for example. Will hopefully not be passed on to future generations, right?、Mm-hmm. Okay, but they only want to do this to prevent serious and 
uh, strongly what kind of diseases? What is this word? Heritable? Yes. Okay. And what does that mean, Albert? Uh, it means characteristics or traits which is capable of being passed from parent to child. All right. Like and hereditary. we talk about something being hereditary, right? Yes. And so they want to stop that from happening. If there's something in your body, some disease, they want to go in and you know, fix that so your kids will not have to deal with that disease, hopefully. And this is according to a new report from the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Medicine. And so if you want to find out more information, you can possibly go to those sources and get more info. And uh, next, Linda, we talk about tinkering with these genes. What is that phrase tinkering with referring to? So we might hear tinkering, like if you're tinkering with an automobile, you're kind of fixing it or changing things around, hopefully to make it better, to improve mm. it. So um, if they're tinkering with genes, they're trying to improve the genes, kind of moving stuff mm -hmm. around. Um, doing things differently. Right. We, earlier we talked about the word alter. So this is another way of saying that, basically. Right. And just talking about this topic of changing or tinkering with our DNA and genes, it gets into a very um, controversial kind of sticky area mm -hmm. because, yeah, there, there's a lot of, there's strong opposition to changing our genes in any way. That's right, and we will talk more about that in just a moment. But here they're saying they're tinkering with the genes in order to enhance or alter traits. Uh, and they tell us some of those here. But uh, we see that word alter again, but the word enhance means... To improve, right. to make better. So we're seeing some kind of... Th these words have similar meanings, a lot of them. They're all talking about changing, enhancing to change, to improve something. And what are some of the traits that they want to change? Strength, intelligence, beauty. Okay, those aren't the ones they want to change, oh, right? So those are off limits. They, this is according to the panel. They said, you know, you shouldn't go in and change someone's DNA to, you know, make your kids stronger or more intelligent or more beautiful. And Linda was just talking about this is a very controversial issue, right? And this mm -hmm. is why, because, you know, if this is um, allowed... That could change the world we live in, right? Right. I want to say, in a sense, that we kind of do that nowadays, right? People who have the resources, they will feed their children, you know, better, or they will uh, maybe do, like, surgery to enhance their looks. So it's kind of, kind of happening already. It is, in a sense, but I guess this is much more invasive, right? Right, and right. So, it's not altering their genes. Yeah. It's just altering their, yeah, physical mm -hmm. appearance mm -hmm. or... Um, yeah, helping them through, I guess, nutrition. Yeah. But it's not, those aren't changes that will be passed on to the next generation. Right. So the authors here are saying that they shouldn't do this. You shouldn't change, you know, genes that affect intelligence, beauty, or strength. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, when we are talking about disease, that's a very different issue. And then we go into talking about something called the germline. Tell us more about that, Albert. Right. So a germline is a series of germ cells by which uh, genetic material is transferred to the offspring, uh, namely within reproductive cells. So uh, you have reproductive cells from the mom and dad, right? And then usually things, these things include like DNA and other kinds of molecules and instructions on how uh, the kid will uh, grow up. Okay. And so they want to change this. And they use that phrase there, so-called, because... Uh, maybe many of you, you haven't heard of this word. I mean, it's kind of new. So sometimes they throw that that word in there so-called because it's an introducing an, a word that may be new to many people. And we get a description here. They're effectively editing humanity's future by altering genes in human reproductive cells. That's why, you know, they're changing this, for example, if they, you know, changing this in someone and then their kids will not be affected, hopefully, by this disease, as, as I mentioned earlier. But, you know, that's all the information there in between. But they say changing the so-called germline is actually illegal in the United States, Linda. Right. And that's what Linda was talking about earlier, because there are so many, you know, moral implications involved. And we get into that here. It's largely been considered ethically off limits. 
uh, as well. And so when we talk about morals and we talk about ethics, uh, what are we really referring to, Albert? Well, we're talking about like our perception, our standards for what is right and what is wrong. You know, there's like two different, as you know, if you go into the next line, it talks about ethically as well off limit. So we Mm -hmm. have two things where we have societal rules that Mm -hmm. we set by laws. And then even if it's not a written laws, it may be something personal where ethically I'm like, oh, I'm against that, even though it's not illegal to do. Yeah. And morals and ethics, they can be used interchangeably, but morals can also refer more to you personally. And ethics can be more talking about society and breaking a rule within society. So they can be used interchangeably, but they can have a bit of a difference as well. Right. Morals can be influenced by your beliefs. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. or your faith. Um, maybe ethics, ha- they have a more universal um, significance. Like people will um, agree that certain things are right and wrong. Okay, and they have people in the field of science who deal with this. What are they called, Albert? They're called bioethicists. Okay, and uh, so we see that they are a scientist uh, who studies and thinks about ethical and biological implications and how they apply this, all of this, to medical research. And so they have people studying this and talking about the ethics of it, and they they ponder things. And we see here uh, scientists are pondering the unforeseen effects and unexamined moral dilemmas. If something is unforeseen, you can't see it, right? Right. You can't expect it or it's unexpected. Okay. And so you don't know what the effects will be yet. And so, in other words... It's kind of a scary thing to go into all of this because we're talking about changing someone's genes, right? Right. And so that can be a scary thing, and so that's why it's illegal. Right. You don't know what the outcome will really be or what possible um, effects it might have other than your intended effect. Okay, which makes sense, right? I think that sounds right to me, at least. Uh, But when we talk about, you know, maybe there's this, uh, you know, medical... implications as well. People, you could save lives as a result, and that could change the equation, right? Right. It could change things up. And so that's what we're going to be talking about here. But there are, I want you to know, of course, it says here, there are some moral dilemmas, some possibilities here uh, where things could go down the wrong road. You know, if scientists or those uh, conducting this procedure decide to do something, you know, that a lot of people think is unethical, that right. could cause a like lot of problems. Like creating a superhuman being. <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> wow, that sounds like you've been watching some sci-fi movies. <laughs> Not actually, but um, I, kind of feel I have like, seen a few. <laughs> I kind of feel like we already have like superhuman beings. Like people live really long or people, you know, that are in the Olympics, you know, they're pretty amazing. Um, mm-hmm. But again, that's, uh, I feel like gene editing is you're going through to the foundation, you're editing the roots, whereas, Mm -hmm. you know, nutrition and everything is like afterwards, you know, attending to the branches of a tree, so to speak. All right. So that's kind of the beginning of what we're talking about here, gene editing. And uh, we've also heard, uh, many of you have probably heard of, you know, the Human Genome Project, which was finished back, I believe, in 2003. And it was a U.S.-funded scientific project to identify Mm -hmm. both the genes and the entire sequence of DNA base pairs that make up the human genome. And so, you know, uh, they're, they're also... They've studied all of this, and they found out different things about diseases. And and so that's part of this. When they go in and they want to edit uh, DNA, they want to, you know, find the places where, you know, those diseases are and kind of edit that out and replace them, I guess, with uh, good DNA, so to speak. Right. I remember about this in like in back, like you said, in 2003, it was a really big deal. You know, scientists were work- working really hard to map out. They were, you know, it's like they went to a new territory and they needed to map out everything so they can see like what's healthy DNA and what's uh, uh, corrupted or tainted DNA. And then like now we can see Here's like, oh, one of the benefits of knowing uh, the DNA and having it mapped out. All right. And so that's a good start here for us at the beginning of our, uh, you know, first day of our Newsworthy Clips. Let's find out more. If you have your magazines again, make sure you pay attention to page 20. Or if you have your digital device, follow along for our next reading for today.
However, scientists have moved forward aggressively to explore the feasibility of altering disease genes in other adult human cells with a revolutionary technique known as CRISPR Cas9. It is widely believed that gene editing of this sort could treat patients with metabolic disorders, certain cancers, and a range of other diseases that arise from genetic mutations without altering the germline. Germline editing should only be pursued to treat diseases that cannot be improved with reasonable alternatives. The committee, a 22-member panel of scientists and bioethicists, said. In addition, they added, scientists should convincingly demonstrate they are targeting a gene that either causes or strongly predisposes a carrier to a serious disease or condition, and that they have weighed the likely risks and benefits of altering that gene. These clinical trials should be conducted under public scrutiny that takes into account issues of societal fairness, personal dignity, and scientific integrity, the panel said. Finally, scientists should conduct long-term follow-up studies to discern how gene editing affects subsequent generations. Public debate and discussion about the technology should continue, the panel added. All right, well, scientists have moved forward aggressively to explore what, Linda? The feasibility of altering disease genes in other adult human cells with a revolutionary technique known as CRISPR Cas9. All right, there's a lot there to talk about. I like that word feasibility. It's a good practical word to use. If something is feasible, Albert, it just means that it's it's within the realm of being possible, of、right. being doable. Right, and so you might run into that word from time to time. And so the scientists are moving forward to explore the feasibility of altering disease genes. Now we're getting into something. Uh, the, the the main point here. Earlier we were talking about well, if you alter genes to, you know, make someone smarter, your kid smarter or stronger or more beautiful, they're saying that's not good. But when we're talking about disease genes and altering those, well, everyone you know would think probably that that's good, or at least a lot more people, because hopefully those diseases will not be passed on. Right, and we are just like. Improving、uh, the quality of life,、mm -hmm. you know. Nowadays, people are living longer thanks to medicine and better nutrition, and they're living a, a better life actually as well.、Yeah. And this technique, they use a word "revolutionary," Linda, which has the idea of something being、uh, kind of new and、uh, right, you know. going to make a huge change,、mm -hmm. just change how we do things. Okay, and then what is all of this? It's called CRISPR case. Nine, and can you tell us a little bit about that? There's a lot we can talk about concerning this, but what's a, just a good general definition of that, Albert? Well, we define it as a method of gene manipulation using molecules such as、uh, gRNA and、uh, Cas9、uh, instead of chemicals or radiation. So before、um, CRISPR, this technique was developed.、Uh, scientists would try using things like radiation. You know,、mm. like we see in、uh, comic books, where radiation affects a person and turns them into a monster or a,、uh, a superhero. And now it's something less、uh, invasive and less harming, and it's a little bit. It's way more accurate.、Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, they create like a little package. Uh, full of molecules and enzymes, and it gives us instructions like, "Hey, this we know what cancer cells look like. Please go into the DNA or the germline and find it. And if you see it,、uh, make sure to、uh, use enzymes and cut it out, and、okay. then take it out. If you don't see it, it'll just dissolve." All right. And so, the CRISPR that we're talking about here is a man-made molecule, and、mm -hmm. it's programmed to actually find diseased. DNA, and so it has scissors, and it goes in and it cuts that out, and、uh, so that's that's that part of it. Right, and just I mean, just to clarify, just in case anyone is、uh, getting the wrong idea, they don't have actual scissors, physical scissors,、mm -hmm. right? It's just kind of like some chemical solution just to help like cut it away. All right, thank you, Albert. And the Case Nine there, it's called CRISPR Case Nine. The Case Nine part means it's a, the protein is referring to the protein that does the cutting. 
and the editing. So I hope you kind of have an idea of what's going on here. It's a bit technical in nature, um, but I hope that clarifies maybe some questions that you have. Right, and I think it's like a really nice technique. I mean, there's videos of this online, but mm -hmm. basically uh, after, you know, learning about it, I just imagine like maybe, you know, when you guys were in kindergartens, did you ever have to like fit a square block into a square hole? It's mm -hmm. kind of like that, but on a different scale where the CRISPR molecules is trying to look for a certain shape of things within mm -hmm. the DNA, and DNA has like different kinds of uh, combinations that it's like gives it like an address to find it. So that's kind of like how it is basically. All right. Well, Linda, what is widely believed about gene editing? Well, that gene editing of this sort could treat patients with metabolic disorders. And a metabolic disorder is a genetic condition that results in enzyme deficiency, and it ends up causing problems with the body's chemical processes. And so it can lead to high blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat, abnormal cholesterol. So um, these will create major problems. Um, also, certain cancers and a range of other diseases that arise from genetic mutations. So it'll be able to treat um, these diseases or these disorders without altering the germline. Okay, and because it's illegal in the U.S. to alter that germline, and so they can do it without changing the germline, which is good news. Right, so your kids will look like your kids, <laughs> and they'll have the same strength as y yourself, yeah. Right, but hopefully they won't have the disease that you're carrying. Right. Okay, so germline editing should only be pursued to treat diseases that cannot be improved with reasonable alternatives. And so if there's another way to treat the disease, uh, the committee says, do that. You know, try that first at least. And, uh, you know, don't just go, you know, altering and changing things and using, you know, this uh, uh, the, the CRISPR case sign and so forth. Use other means. If Barrier to a serious disease or condition. Okay, and so they should show that they're actually targeting this gene, you know, that's going to cause some issue with regards to disease. And so they, it's just a way of keeping everyone accountable, right? Making sure that everyone's on the same page and people aren't, you know, targeting all of these genes that, you know, have nothing to do with the disease. And so I think Basically, they're saying there should be a lot of regulations in place uh, because this is a very sensitive issue. Um, and we have a phrase here that's very helpful. When we talk about someone being predisposed to something, what do we mean, Albert? Right. So it means that, you know, it's someone that is more likely to uh, behave in a particular way or to suffer from a particular illness or condition um, I can imagine some of our friends out there, you know, maybe uh, they get uh, sunburned easily, mm. you know, and mm -hmm. that could be, I can say, they're predisposed to uh, sunburn. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So they also need to weigh the likely risks and benefits of altering that gene. Okay. So they need to really do their research, make sure that they're doing the right thing, they're following the proper procedures, and weigh the risks. And uh, what are the risks? What are the benefits of altering the gene? And uh, then proceed. Right. right. Um, but I think it still leaves a lot of gray area um, because who is deciding, you know, if the scientist or whoever is targeting the gene, if it's convincing enough, right? Mm -hmm. Or, um, and we saw reasonable alternatives in quotes, all right? So what are... You know, who defines mm. what reasonable mm -hmm. is. Right. So I think it's still very, um, yeah, con quite controversial. And yeah, it is. Leaves, yeah, leaves a lot of gray area. Because maybe everyone, of course, will not agree on, you know, which genes should be targeted, if you should do this at all. Uh, there's some other things that aren't included here that, you know, we don't know about yet. And so I think it's like they're just saying proceed with caution, like, it sounds like good news, but be careful, right? Right. I mean, this is highly subjective. I really like what Linda brought up. It's like, where do you draw the line, right? You can say, oh, well, cancer, okay, that's bad. But some people argue, like, oh, um, just certain things like not having enough strength or beauty, whatnot. Mm. 
Right, and so they want to stray away from that. Um, but who knows in the future, right? You know, maybe this panel says this, and what about other people and mm. other places and so forth, other, other countries? And so it could become you know, a little messy. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> yeah. Well, these clinical trials should be conducted under public scrutiny. That's a good word there, Linda. If something is conducted under scrutiny, what is being done? It's um, being conducted under close examination or careful watchfulness. <laughs> like how my mom would scrutinize how well I cleaned my room Ooh. as a kid. Yes. yes. And she would let you know if it was done right. Yeah, you know? usually not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they need to you know, take into account issues of societal fairness, personal dignity, and scientific integrity. Okay, so th these trials need to, in, in, you know, include all of that. If you take something into account, you consider it. Mm -hmm. And so, first of all, societal fairness, Linda. Yeah, what society thinks is fair. Um, and personal dignity, scientific integrity. These are all very subjective mm -hmm. things. Yes, um, what I consider to be, you know... Uh, when it comes to personal dignity, I might have a different s set of guidelines for myself mm -hmm. than you, right? Right. Okay, and so that's... Uh, but I think, you know, we, there are some general things that most people seem to be able to agree on. So maybe that's what they're referring to. Could be. Yes, but of course there's room for disagreement there. And then scientific integrity, Albert. Well, I'm not really sure, like, I guess for how research and the progress of um, science. Okay, yeah, I think, well, you know, when you talk about scientists, when they produce something or they say something, they want to be people of integrity. What they say holds some weight, right? And, for example, if they, you know, kind of lead people down, there's room for disagreement there. And then scientific integrity, Albert. Well, I'm not really sure, like, I guess for how research and the progress of um, science. Okay. Yeah, I think, well, you know, when you talk about scientists, when they produce something or they say something, they want to be people of integrity. What they say holds some weight, right? And, for example, if they, you know, kind of lead people down this road and, we come to find out that, you know, it led to a really bad place, and they would look bad. Yeah. And so I think, you know, their integrity can be on the line in certain situations. Um, and we end here, day one, with a, a sentence talking about public debate. Public debate and discussion about the technology should continue, the panel added. And so it kind of leaves it a bit open-ended, doesn't it, Linda? Right, um, because nothing has been... Yeah, decided. Um, it's still very subjective. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for day one of our Newsworthy Clips article. We hope you learned something new today, and we hope you join us again tomorrow as we continue our Newsworthy Clips article. Until then, this is Brandon. Linda. And Albert. Saying goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.